Hello VPRO members, so today we got a package from a customer with a 2011 Kia Forte and they have the common intermittent start with the vehicle. So it is a SIM 2K 341 and what they requested from us after seeing the previous video we had is to disable the immobilizer from the ECU. That way they don't have to rely on the smart tray unit or their transponder key to start. They live in Quebec, so it's typically much colder there. So they have these problems much more often during winter. And so they want to eliminate the headache of the vehicle not starting. And so what we're going to be doing today is pretty much going through the process of removing the casing on the ECU, using Flex to program the ECU to disable the immobilizer and closing it off. disabled the immobilizer in this ECU, we are going to use the flex box as a bench gateway to connect the ECU to the flex box through the OBD port into the diagnostic tool to read the DTCs into the ECU and confirm that the immobilizer has been disabled. And typically that's shown if P1690 is eliminated from the ECU, which is related to the smart tray unit. And next we're gonna show you how everything is connected. Now, in order for this flex box to work on the bench, you would need to purchase the FLX 2.14 and we sell this on our website. You would need this connection cable to be able to proceed with setting up the flex box as a gateway on the bench. So in this section of the video, we are going to show you a capability of the flex box to act as a bench gateway to connect control units to diagnostic tools. And what we're doing here is with this SIM2K 341, the first thing we want to do is we, we want to make sure that we're able to communicate to this ECU. So when you get one of these modules in, you want to make sure that you can actually communicate to it before doing anything else. And so how this flex box typically works is you have ports that provide power, ports that provide ground, and then you have, in this case, can high, can low. So B1 would be can high and B2 would be can low and B3 and B4 are for older protocols such as the K-Line. And so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna be connecting this as per the proper wiring diagram. We know the grounds and the power points. Next, we're gonna connect to the can high and can low of this ECU. There's can high and there's can low. And once you have proper connections, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna turn on the ignition. There we have it. And now we're gonna to attempt to connect to the vehicle. So we're gonna auto detect to see if it actually sees the vehicle. So it's gonna scan through Kia Forte. 
and there we have it. So we've communicated to the control module. Now, if we auto scan, of course, we only have one control unit on the bench. So it's gonna go through scanning all the control modules that a Kia Forte would have. But in our case, we only have the engine. So to speed things up, we would go through control module, select engine, and there we have it. If we click on ECU information, these are the information related to that. If we go to trouble code, this is where, because we are doing an emo off here, what we're interested to see is the P1690. So as you can see here, we have a P1690. This engine control module is looking for a response from the smart tray unit, which is the immobilizer system. And once we perform the emo off function, we would use the setup to make sure that we're able to communicate to the control module. And we would also connect and make sure that this code is not present, which means that the emo off solution was successfully done. And so P1690 is not supposed to be there once emo off solution is completed. And this is how you can take advantage of the Flexbox to perform bench diagnostics, as well as be able to actually perform bench flashing. So if you wanted to flash this module through the latest calibration, you can do that. You can connect immobilizer modules on the bench. You can connect transmission modules on the bench. And that is the advantage of having a flex box acting as a gateway for bench work. So we ended up disabling the immobilizer for this ECU that came from a 2011 Kia Forte. And as you saw in this video, we showed you the process of removing the case using flex to read the data, disabling or doing file manipulation to disable the immobilizer using the flex box to connect the ECU on the bench and confirm that the job has been done correctly. And I'm going to ship this back to the customer. And you can see in one of our previous videos, as to what are the pros and cons to disabling the immobilizer on the ECU. Make sure you watch that video and understand more about that. But hopefully you learned something here and you can visit www.vpro.ca slash training. There's a link on the main website on vpro and we now have courses, some that are virtual, some that are hands-on such as the soldering class that's coming up soon as well. And so you can check there, you can book the tickets right now for these classes. Again, if you have any other questions, let us know, but hopefully you learned something new here and until next time, take care.